just looking at that, you know, your own experience with Daryl, because he's an interesting guy, man. Yeah. Like I, I want to give credit where credit's due, at least through my experience, you know, just the coach's side and kind of right around, right around when we started was right around where his name mm -hmm. was coming to prominence. But I, I've always kind of felt like he was that coach that with the most unlikeliest of circumstances where he said, actually, no, we're not going to do this the way we've always done it. Mm -hmm we're going to look at this in a totally different way. And that kind of gave permission to a whole up, whole suite of other coaches like yourself to say, Hey, may maybe we can look at this different too. And then it just seems like we've been, you know, iterating and iterating on top of each other and the games just, it looks different now. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, yeah. So when, so I was with him in 2013, 2014, and like you said, around that, like he was starting to get more and more popular and people were becoming like, I was actually talking to my wife about this recently, like being a skills coach, I don't think that was really like a job 15, 20 years ago. Like, I mean, I know people were doing skills, but like yeah. to, to have this as my job, like I, I wouldn't have believed that coming out of college. And like, and a big part of that was, you know, he, like you said, he saw the game differently. He saw it from like a, you know, we can teach these things that we don't have to just do flow drills. And, you know, it's not like a big thing I learned from him. It's like, you know, you're not born with hockey sense. Like some people are, are genetically, they, they have the propensity to be more, you know, better at hockey, but like you can work on your skills. You can improve your skills. We can, you know, you can make an impact on the game besides just like, oh, he either has it or he doesn't have it. Um, and using different learning strategies and methods and, and, you know, using video feedback. That was a big thing. Like, I don't know how many times, and we always joke like video is like the ultimate truth machine. Like, there'd be so many times where he'd be like, I need you to get low or have, you know, more knee bend. And I'm like, I'm as low as I can possibly get. Like in my, in my mind, my feeling was there's no way I can get lower. Yeah. He goes, hey, come here. And he shows me on the video and it's like, I'm not even close to being low. So the combination, and, and that's where I think you can really speed up the, the learning process is, and that's what I learned from is like, if you can link the video with now a relationship between you and the player and share like a similar vocabulary, you, your your development can just skyrocket. You know what? Like this whole notion of, of hockey sense, and I, I don't know, I don't know how best to maybe explain this, but I I look at it now, especially just you know being a, a dad and looking at my boys and how they acquire skills. And I'm like, is 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 it a is it hockey sense? Is it basketball sense? Or is it just generally some kids maybe have a better feel? or awareness with their own body. And that's what allows them to um, acquire these skills or eventually acquire a sense. Like, is anybody really truly, is, it, is this baby come out with hockey sense? Or is it just that, you know, some kids to your point about bending down, like some, they can, they can watch it on tape and then they can instantly go out and, and react to it or, or make those adjustments. Yeah. I mean, so that an another thing that I learned from him is like the best athletes in the world are field based athletes and, you know, you can tell them something and they'll go through like a mental re rehearsing of, okay, that's what it's supposed to feel like. And then if I were to give them feedback, you know, hey, I need you to put more weight onto your right leg, like they can feel that and they can express that. Um, they can express that to you. So part of my issue and what took so, like, it, it took me a long time to get past this is like, I would do a rep, I would fall, I would make a mistake. And then he'd be like, what'd you feel there? And I'm like, I, I have no idea. Like I was just going as fast as I could. I was doing it like I was just doing it the way you told me to. And it's like, no, part of working with somebody in that respect is like, you need to, f you need to really like get into your body and feel what your body's feeling. Because I always say like, if, if you can't feel what I'm seeing, then I can't correct a mistake. Like if I say, like, I mean, with the example, like you need to get lower. If you can't feel that, then I, I can't make a, I can't make a change. And like, so with you're saying with, you know, some kids being more willing to have hockey sense or being born with it or whatever, like, I do think there is a huge genetic component to development that it's hard to get past. Like some kids, you know, the McDavid's and Matthews of the world, they found the perfect sport. Like it's like match fit yeah. quality. They found, they tried out other things. They were born in the right environment. The culture set it up. And their, their genetics, plus all those other factors, lined up perfectly for McDavid to be the best player in the world. That doesn't mean he doesn't work hard, but like all things lined up really well. And I'm sure you see it with some of the, you know, the young kids you work with is 
there's kids right now at, at four, five, six, eight years old who want the puck. There's kids who don't want the puck. There's kids who are more willing to make mistakes. They're okay with it. They like feedback. So, you know, over yeah. time, those things are going to have, obviously, like they keep compounding on each other. And if, and if you're a kid who demands the puck at six years old, you're probably going to keep getting it more and more. But I'm sure you see some kids, it's like a grenade on their stick and they want nothing to do with it because totally. they're, they're it's not so, why they're out there. Yes. They're so worried. Like some people are just more like they don't like making mistakes. And that's like, you know, you can coach that you can develop that. But like I said, you are born with a certain propensity to be more willing to make mistakes or be more like, you know, so that's the, the, the genetic is a big factor. You know, it's funny. So this like literally played out like in real time for me this morning. So my my wife's at the gym on Wednesday mornings and I've got our four-year-old. And so this weekend we watched the slam dunk competition. So he's got this like little fish, Fisher Price basketball yeah. net. So he's been practicing slam dunks for the last 72 hours. And I have this moment where he's got this little toy basketball and he's bouncing it. But like, you know, visually when you, you know, I'm sure through the eyes of a four-year-old, he's a kid, you, you think I'm going to slap the ball. Well, when yeah. you do that, the ball just it goes dead, it sits yeah. on the ground. Like it's a feel and I can't really describe it, but you gotta have a feel yeah. for the ball. And I just had this moment where I'm looking at him, I'm like, there's probably kids in the world that pick up a basketball and figure out in about two seconds that you don't slap it. You get a feel and that's how you bounce it. In the same way that some kids get in front of a piano yep. and they just assume you slap the keys, but there's some kids that instantly figure out, actually, no, you don't, you play the keys. Yes. And, and to your point about just that, you know, the, the align, you know, whatever power in the universe kind of yeah. aligns some kids in the right environment. And then it's just a rocket ship and they, and they take off. Um, when, like when you're going on the ice today with kids, like how, how young do you generally, would you, would you get on the ice? With um, I work with mites maybe oh, wow. once or twice a month. And then, yeah. yeah so, you know, and, and sometimes we have some mini mites out there. Um, you know, I have, a two and a half, almost three year old plus a one year old. So I'm sure I'll be skating so with you're them. Going, yeah, you know exactly. You're going through that's, it. Yeah. that's where like, I, I take pride in my ability to work with the five, six year olds and then also work with the best in the world. So yeah, I'll, I'll go out with the, the young kids are, are funny. Cause it's just like, they're so uncoordinated. Some of them, they just like, they're having, they just love being out there. Like yeah. they look like a box. They can barely move. Like it's that I like going out with those kids. Cause it just reminds me like, what it's all about and like it's just about having fun and then being with your friends and like it just whenever i go out with them it's like how do you not enjoy like this like they love being out here they're fired up how, how do you set the table with kids that age like how do you create that learning environment um, um a few things one i have i have the benefit is like i can demonstrate everything so kids automatically are like you know i'll do i, I can do a michigan and kids are like oh my god that's the craziest thing i've ever seen i wish i could do a michigan yeah, yeah. so you much know, street cred with that so like and then I, i'll always like you know i'll try to play keep away with the kids and like you know i, I can play keep away against four or five six-year-olds before they like you know then it can get dangerous because we got sticks flying all over the place but like so I, I'll engage with them on that. And they just, they love like when I start getting them spun around and I'm dangling them, they love that. But then also like, I'll, I'm very loud on the ice. I like, I'm, I'm very, not yelling, but I'm just, I'm a big presence. Um, yeah. And then I start to do simple things like, and this is where I've learned from my teaching classrooms is, you know, hey, if you can hear me, put your hand on your head. And then like, I'm paying attention. Can the, can the, are the kids putting their head? Hey, if you can hear me, I want you to, do do five push-ups real quick or hey if you can hear me so just trying to grab their attention like that um that's one thing that i'll do is just like you're, you're checking for um checking for learning isn't the standpoint they're the, the word but that's a different thing but um so i think it's it's being a a loud presence being able to do it and you need to move i don't stay on anything for too long and i i, I try to avoid too much lines like I'll, I'll go to lines occasionally but like you know for mites for example i'll do a lot of to start all 20 kids are going to be skating at one time okay we're going to go chaos okay 20 seconds chaos skate all over the place blow the i'm going to blow the whistle stop eyes on me okay we're going to stick handle in place so instead of just having one kid at a time doing this i've got 20 kids doing it they're all interacting they're watching each other they're having fun i'll make them do something silly like okay you got to drop down like roll over get back up or like I'll do, 
you know, say I'll do some races where, okay, on the blue line, you got to do this Superman, Batman, which the little kids love where it's like, you got to dive as far as you can, roll over, get up. If you are involved with the minor hockey association that hosts tournaments or multiple tournaments, or you're a coach who operates spring tournaments or any organization that puts on events, then you're going to thank me for introducing you to Event Connect. Event Connect makes managing and growing your sports events simple and efficient. It literally covers every aspect of the event management from scheduling, uh, linking out of town teams or visitors with hotel bookings to capturing registration fees and collecting additional revenue all on one platform. Best of all, it's free. Event Connect receives a small fee through its payment processor, but there is no upfront investment. I got introduced to Event Connect because several of our league and association partners began using them and raved about the time it saved, how user-friendly it was, and the additional revenue they were able to generate. In fact, the feedback was so positive, we began using Event Connect to host TCS Live, our annual coaching conference at the University of Michigan. It was a great decision. I know firsthand how stressful it can be to run tournaments and events and can't imagine going through that process again without Event Connect. If you want to simplify the process of organizing your tournament or event and tap into new revenue, then go to eventconnectsports.com to book a demo today. Don't go through the painful process of trying to run your next tournament without Event Connect. Go to eventconnectsports.com and get started now.